G'day church, welcome back. Um, it's great to be with you here for another week. Uh, we've got a, an exciting message coming up uh, for you very shortly. We've got John here and he's going to bring to you today um, this last instalment, a purpose for the church. Um, so over the last uh, three weeks, um, we've looked at learning, we've looked at worship. Last week, Carol gave us a, a great word on um, fellowship. And today, we've got John here to talk to us about caring. How do we, as a church, care? Um, and what a great thing to be able to do during these times when a lot of people are in distress, a lot of people are worried, a lot of people are losing their jobs. And so we've got a great opportunity to not only care for the people of the church, but also to care for people outside of the church. Um, if you're not involved in a, in a virtual small group now, um, as we've had to stop meeting together in small groups, so we've gone online, um, it's pretty simple to do. Um, you normally just have to click on a link and you'll be straight up there and straight linked up to the group. So if you'd like to be involved in that and you're not already, um, just leave us a message, leave us a comment at the end um, of this message and we'd love to be able to con connect you into a group and just be able to really yeah, continue this journey with you. Well, I'm going to hand over to John and I'll uh, see you in a moment. Thanks, John. Thank you, Evan. Um, being a caring church, the, practice side, the practical side of the ecclesia, so when we talk about the practical nature of caring church, what are we actually talking about? You know, it's a, a word, the word caring is a difficult word to get your head around. I've provided a worksheet for you to do, and I'd like you to do the first three questions before you start watching the tape. The second thing is that as we go through, we will pause and just allow you to discuss your questions, uh, discuss your answers, but the idea is that I'd like your personal responses, not dictionary meanings, not theological meanings, just how those things meet in your life. All right, a common definition of the word caring is the work or practice of looking after those unable to care for themselves. In layman's language, that's doing for someone something they can't do for themselves. If we take this definition at its fundamental level, then to care for someone is to care on two levels. Firstly, to look after those who are unable to care for their own spiritual needs, and secondly, for those who can't look after their own physical needs. This brings us to a series of interpretations, viewpoints, preconceived notions and even misunderstandings. Caring is an opened and watched process and for this reason it is so often a process where people gain importance or prominence within the church. Let's face it, we're all driven by success. We all want our ministry to count and make a difference both in the church and in the world. It's called human drive. It makes us get up in the morning and it makes us prepare for the future. Here is where the misconceptions and misunderstandings come in. When you think about it, care is to be a servant to others. If you're caring, then you are providing a support, a service, a helping hand or even encouragement. Remember the church is not a place where superstars rule. Servanthood is a requirement not an option. So, what is it to be a servant? You know, in the Greek language, they had a word, diakonos. We pronounce it in English as diakonos. Theirs is slightly different. But one who executes the commands of others, especially a master, a servant, attendant. Sadly, today, the word servant often comes with a negative connotation. It gives the impression of someone who is lower than the social structure and even less important than others. Let's see what scripture says about it. So now turn to Philippians 1.1 1, 1. and we'll pause here for a minute and just let you have a look at your answers and share your answers.
Question 4 on your sheet deals with Philippians 1.1. Paul is writing to the people of Philippi and he says, Paul and Timothy, servant of Christ Jesus to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray in joy. So to care biblically is the word diakonos. Yes, we translate the word to deacon, but when you think of it, that's exactly what Paul said both he and Timothy were, servants of Christ Jesus. So where does that put us? If we're, preparing to be, if we're prepared to be servants of the living God, such as Paul and Timothy, how do others fit into the story? See, Paul does not separate himself and make himself special. He includes himself and Timothy as joint servants along with the overseers and deacons. We can say that the job of the elders and the deacons is to care and we just allow it to flow on. But Paul makes it clear that his servanthood, in verse 3, is to pray to all God's people. And he prays for all his God's, God's people with joy. So let's move on and see how servanthood in action looks. So we're going to move to Acts chapter 6, verse 1. Acts 6.1 In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebratic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, it, will, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. So problems in the church aren't unique. So they even had problems back then. We very rarely have everything under control and in order. The church back then was growing ex exponentially and the ministry was not keeping up. There were people in need. The Hellenistic Jews and their widows were feeling they were being overlooked and not being cared for. They had a need that they themselves could not satisfy. Remember the definition and focus on the fact that diakonos means to serve or care. Don't get caught in the misunderstanding that it's the job of the deacons or the elders because we have changed the meaning of diakonos to deacon to represent a profile within the church. The Greek pure meaning is to be a servant. So here in Acts, we have a church that was failing to care for an element of its people, failing to provide for those who could not provide for themselves. No different to today. So often we, we get it in our heads that the word servant means to be less than someone else and we don't want to stoop to that level. We so often want to feel important and do the prominent jobs in the church. The need doesn't go away just because we ignore it. They had a solution to the caring problem. Look at verse 2. They called all the disciples together and over the next eight verses they worked out a practical solution. They recognised clearly that there was a spiritual need and a physical need. Now I'll pause there and let you have a look at their solutions. One Corinthians ten thirty one. Well, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do it all for God's glory. Live in such a way as to cause no trouble either to Jew or Gentile or to the Church of God. Just do as I do. I try to please everyone in all that I do, not thinking of my own good, but the good of all, so that they might be saved. 
We so often see our ministry as the most important, the most essential, even the most rewarding. But when we sit back and realise that our ministries are, or should be, focused around our gifting, then we need to focus on what Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians. It's not our ministry, it belongs to Christ. Whatever you do, you do it all for God's glory. There are no superstars in the church, in the ecclesia, in the gathering of God's people. The focus, as Jesus said to Peter, feed my sheep. Jesus called Peter, the rock, to be a servant to his God's people. In verse 33, Paul lets us put into perspective why we are called to care, to serve. Verse 33, just just do as I do. I try to please everyone in all that I do, not thinking of my own, but of the good of all. So it's a service. He's being a servant. So we'll turn to Matthew 25 and read 32 to 35. Matthew 25, 32 to 35. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from the other as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. I don't think we have to explain that. It's self-explanatory. So to care is to be a servant. There's nothing more Christ-like than to be a servant to others. We all can't be preaching, caring for the spiritual needs of others. We can't all be cooks looking after the physical physical needs of others. We all can't be welcomers serving those who are new or lonely. But at this time of crisis, the world is looking towards a caring, servant-like church, the ecclesia, the body of believers that are Christ to them. We can't stand on our pride, nor can we be so holy that we are no earthly good. We need to mobilise and stand up and be counted in the gifting that Christ has empowered you with, with the Holy Spirit. Stand up and use it today, now. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the words of scripture and the encouragement that you've given us. We are in troubled times. We are in worrying times. But Lord, you are in control. You are never out of control. We thank you for the reminder, Lord, that we are to be a caring people, not only to each other, but to the world outside. Lord, as the world that doesn't know you is struggling to come to terms with what's going on, Allow us to rise up and be Christ to them. Allow them to see the caring nature of what you have. Let them see you through us. Amen. Amen. May the grace, peace and love of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ be with you. May he lift you up and protect you. Allow him to minister to your needs. Amen. Oh, thanks for that, John. That's really a challenging message for us all to to really be Christ-centred in our caring and and looking out to a world that is crying out for care at this point in time. Um, I hope in your small groups, I hope online if you're watching via Facebook, um, I hope you take these things seriously. I hope you take up the challenge and to go and find someone to care for. You won't have to look too far at the moment. 
Again, if you're interested in joining one of our virtual small groups, i uh, just ask you to uh, click on the message button, give us a message, or just leave a comment down the bottom. Somebody will get back in touch with you to uh, get you in contact with a, a virtual small group now. Um, also, just coming up um, next week, we'll be starting our series on victory as we lead in towards Easter. I hope you can continue to join us and uh, join in with these messages. I hope to have those notes somehow attached to the Facebook page for those wanting to get it via that way. Um, if I can't, please just give us a message and I'll send them to you if you're wanting them. Um, other than that, we start our new series next week on victory as we lead up to Easter. Hope to see you all back here um, as we look towards Easter. Thanks for joining us. Love to see you here next week. See you later.